welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the newest episode of the Real Estate and Chill Podcast. I am your host, James Chatter from Cliffco Mortgage, here with Kevin Iglesias, associate broker. I mean, do we need an introduction? Do we really need an introduction? There's a million dollars as our backdrop right now. This oh, is yeah. not Photoshopped. It's not. All right. Well, you, we could touch these cars. We could. We have the one and only J.R. Oinstein in the building. Welcome back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Welcome back. First yeah. and foremost, yes. you were our seventh, eighth guest on the show. I don't know. I just remember I had Baby Yoda to my left. Yes, yeah. we had Baby Yoda. We roasted him. That was a good time. Kevin yeah. wasn't there. Yeah. But, you know, we knew that Kevin had to be here. We had to reshoot again. A lot of stuff has changed since the last time you've been on the episode. Yeah, big so, time. please, introduce yourself for everyone who didn't watch the first one. Okay. Uh, sure. My name is J.R. Ornstein. I'm an insurance agency owner. Uh, car insurance, home insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, do it all. Um, we are here today at Noble Motor Cars in Bohemia, New York. Um, buddies of mine were kind enough to, to share uh, the space. So behind this, you've got a McLaren and a Yours. Pretty cool, right? I would say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm really happy to be here, guys. This is cool. You have, uh, you're going to get the crown right now for bringing us to the coolest <laughs> studio 100%. space that we've been in. I mean, our next <laughs> guest is definitely going to have to top this. Yeah, who, I don't know. I don't. What tops this? You know, maybe shooting on a helicopter or something. I don't know. There's a million dollars behind this, right? A here. million dollars. Yeah, that's behind an us. expensive set. And you insured both of these vehicles. I uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> 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 I cannot talk about my clients. <laughs> I mean these cars. Smart answer. Yeah. Smart answer. Yes. I like that. So when looking at these exotic cars, you know, insurance is definitely important. I would say. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. These Question. are expensive cars. If. Just one, like one, just a pothole, right? Yeah. And then you get into a car accident. Full coverage means full coverage? Yeah, well, that's a good question, right? So full coverage is the type of terminology that most people use and have heard of. Uh, there is technically no such thing. But when people talk about full coverage, they're just saying, oh, I've got collision and comprehensive, right? I got physical damage coverage for the car. Now, these cars, of course, have to have that, right? They're worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, and the parts are very expensive, very expensive. Even though they're modified, everything is covered? Or you said there's no yeah, such yeah, thing every, as... Every, everything, okay. is, everything is covered, right? So at the time of a loss, all of the details about the car will come out so that they can give a, a market value, right? All the way up to a total loss. If it was either totaled in an accident or if it was stolen or something like that, uh, the insurance companies generally are going to say, all right, let's look up this year, make and model and this condition with these, you know, specs, these details. And what's the average price that that's being sold for? And let's say the tri-state area for us, right? right. And that's how they're going to determine how much of a check they're writing out in the event of, let's say, a total loss or a stolen car, minus whatever their deductible is. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> is that, are these premiums more expensive than uh, Honda Accord? Um, just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit more than a Honda Accord. No, oh. but, you know, it, it's a very common uh, question is, what does it cost to insure an exotic vehicle? So here's what I'll tell you. There's a wide range. I've, I've got uh, clients who pay $100 a month. Okay. For a vehicle like yeah, this? Yeah, I, I, this morning I, you know, I was looking at one, about $100 a month. That was an Aston Martin, okay? Now, that's a older gentleman living in the north shore of Nassau County who's also a homeowner, right? So you've got, he's, a, he's in the right age, he's got lots of discounts, you know? But now compare that to, let's say, a 19-year-old driving, oh, yeah. even yeah. just, let's say, an M3 or M5, lives in Brooklyn, has a couple points on their license, and they're paying like 500 bucks a month. So there's so many different factors involved to determine the rates. But what I can tell you is, if you've got a, forget, let's say, like a young kid, but if you've just got uh, an adult um, with a clean driving record, um, the, those rates can be pretty comparable to what you would see, let's say, on a really high-end luxury. So I'm not talking exotics. Mm -hmm. So someone driving this Urus right here, their premium could be the same as someone else that's driving a Mercedes. It just, it depends on all these different factors. Is it higher than average? Yes, but it's not like it's four times the cost because the car costs four times. So question, because um, this is, they sell lease cars and everything. Is that cheaper as far as like insurance wise because of the amount of vehicles or? 
You're, are you saying like a like a if you lease like a, it versus finance it? Or? No, I'm just saying like all right. So these cars are insured, right? I'm, right. I'm pretty sure all the cars here, the exotic cars, are insured here. Um, based on the number of vehicles, you get like a cheaper insurance, or is it just per car? Oh, uh, okay, gotcha. You're, so you're talking about like is there a multiple yeah. car? Like discount? at my house, I have a fleet of these cars that I need to get insured. Right, of course. So right, is right. It, would it be cheaper getting them insured <laughs> <laughs> at the uh, same time? Yes. Yeah, we can we could talk about your fleet of exotics <laughs> after the show. <laughs> Bullshit. Um, but, uh, but, but but yes, and if you've got two or more. It's going to be cheaper. You're going to get a cheaper rate. You're going to get a multiple car discount. Now, I can't speak for all insurance companies, but that's a standard practice. But it doesn't matter, at least in most cases, if you have two or if you've got 20. It's either you have one or you've got multiple. So you brought up a, you, you brought up a valid point, you know, off air. Um, there's a lot of insurance companies, right? What makes people want to do business with you? Like, what is what is what would you say is like, the reason people do business with you. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you, you do business correctly, you have right. a, a long book of uh, yeah. a business, but what would you say is like one of the, one of the reasons why people do business with you? Um, or well, should do business with you? So, or will do business with you? I like that, even better. Um, you know, listen, it's much like the lender business or, 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 or the real estate business. Uh, it's about relationships. It's about trust. Um, in my business, listen, you are, when you're, I'm, I'm about to get really corny, okay? But when you choose your insurance company, you are literally choosing who's going to take care of you when shit hits the fan, right? When something bad happens, that's who you're calling. So that's who you're signing up for. So yes, there's always going to be a certain percentage of people who are saying, listen, I just want the cheapest thing. To that I say, do you want the lowest price or do you want to be covered? Because you can't have both. Now, yeah, there are exceptions. I'm more often, we're saving people a lot of money and we're giving them better coverage, but that can't happen all the time. Um, but generally, people are doing insurance with us because they trust us. We give them a good experience. Um, we know what we're doing. I've got a large staff. I've got veterans on my team. Um, in the case of you know super high-end cars like the ones behind us, we're just really experienced. We know how to do this. There's um, a lot of exotic cars on your page. I yeah, mean, yeah. you could spend like half an hour or an yeah. hour just scrolling through your page. So you definitely yeah. got to check his Instagram out. that's a fraction out. of them. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fraction yeah. of them. And know? I only bring that up to Ali Hoop that you've done business with JR. Do yeah. business with JR. Yes, indeed. And yeah. he is the person I call. I mean, whenever I call, JR always picks up right away and I need something, he gets it to me right away. So yeah. from a lender perspective, it's really good because like whenever I, whenever I call, you always just pick up right away and yeah. then send me whatever I need back. And we've done, we've done, I don't even know how many deals together. Yeah. We've done a few. You know, when it comes to um, insurance as well, whether it's the customer that's looking for it or it's uh, a lender who's got a client in, in need, uh, speed is pretty important. Um, and that's an advantage we certainly have, especially because um, I'm pretty damn good um, with, with, with replying very quickly, but then I have a whole team. So generally the way it works is I've got a relationship, I'm gonna connect that person with one of the agents on my team, and very often then that, let's say that, that partner is just gonna say, oh man, that person on JR's team, they're my go-to you know, he or she did a great job, and they may just contact them directly. But if that person's not available in that exact moment and it's an urgent thing, then it's, hey, just call me. I've got a whole team. We can always help, help you know, everyone. So we're 24 seven, that's another big reason. You know, a lot of, we, we get phone calls at 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Uh, I just crashed my car. Yeah, if my team is watching this, they're laughing. They're like, 8 p.m., GR, we're quoting at like 11 p.m. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So full service. Yeah, because, because, you know, listen, there's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of options out there. So ultimately you have to make a decision from a business standpoint, same for you guys, is what makes you different, you know? And in my case, one of the differences is that, you know, I'm open when 99% of the other guys aren't. Not only that, but I do want to compliment you on the content that you're doing. It's amazing. Thank like, you. When I think insurance now, I think JR. Not that I didn't before. Yeah. It's just saying like now you're, you're literally everywhere, right? And it's just, the content is just coming and coming out. So it's Thank like, you. all right. I appreciate that. Definitely top of mind. Yeah, it's uh, doing content on a regular basis. I don't have to tell you guys. It's, it's a job. It it's, takes it, serious effort. 
Yeah. You got to think about what you're going to teach. You know, you got to put a little thought, hey, what am I going to say? You also need to capture and maintain attention. And that's not easy. Yeah. It, it is not easy. Now, I know that I have an advantage because insurance on its own is just so fascinating and everyone yes. is so interested. I love insurance. And, you know, I love that's, to hear about right, insurance. That's, it's, just, it's really one of the sexiest topics. So it just kind of sells itself. I know. You should have seen yeah. Kevin say that. Zoom no into my face. <laughs> um, but no, it, it's a real challenge, you know. So it certainly helps to have some eye candy like this, right? If I'm talking about insurance policies, Everyone's going to snore, but so I try my best, even if I'm corny most of the time, I try my best to be entertaining and try to teach a little something. So two things, you hear noise in the background because we are in a garage. Yeah. Yes. So this is real life. We're yeah. in the moment right now. Damn right. Secondly, uh, to my defense, I wasn't here for the first time, but I'm glad I'm here for the second time. Yeah. Not just because of the eye candy, but you, I mean... Again, your business, it seems like it's, it's grown so much. Yeah, man. Uh, I was having my second son at the moment, so I, fortunately I couldn't be here. Excuses. <laughs> <laughs> so people don't grind. I mean, I like Baby Yoda better. All right, hot seat, hot seat. <laughs> yeah. All right, electric or gas, what do you prefer? Um, well, I've never owned an electric vehicle, so I guess I... I guess is is the way to go. That's you know right now I'm an AMG guy, but AMGs. Uh, but you know we'll see. I the who knows what the future holds. You know I'm, I, I I say gas. I prefer gas. I prefer yeah. electric right now. Like just but, just personally, I just I just like it. You it's know what? Like I look, a smooth drive. I mean, it depends on what car you're driving. I mean, obviously. Totally. But I think that like I don't know Teslas are just so yeah. nice. So my dad has a Tesla. I drive it all the time, and then like. I don't have to pay for gas, first of all. Yeah. Gas prices are coming down, thankfully, but yeah. like, I don't have to pay for gas. The ride is super smooth. Put it, put it on autopilot whenever I'm going places. Yeah. I'm looking at the road, but my hands aren't on the wheel. I have to touch it every two seconds, Playing whatever. video games. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just chill out. Like, it's a cool space. I like it. Yeah, so, they're cool cars. And they have sure. a frunk, a front trunk. The frunk. Well, so does a Porsche. All right, well, <laughs> I guess. I prefer the Porsche. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, but I mean, like, dream car, like, sports car-wise, you can't like what, what's your what's 100%. your dream car? I mean, you've insured so many luxurious vehicles like exotic cars. What's like a car that has come across your desk that you're like, wow, like this is I, I want just want to touch it, sleep in it, drive Live, it. Yeah, um, man, that's I probably should have an answer ready, ready to go for that one. I'm surprised you don't. I, 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 I don't. You know, I am uh, although I'm now doing content. I'm on camera all the time. I'm. Uh, naturally more introverted. I'm not a attention, attention, attention person. So I'd probably do something that's a little bit less bright. Prius. You know? uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe like a 911 or something like that. So I'm in. You yeah, know, it's I'm not in flashy a, at all, JR. Nah, yeah, it's not flashy. It's, it's not flashy. Le- it's all. less. <laughs> it's it's less. It's a little bit less. You know. But I'm saying if you're if you're asking about exotics, that's probably the route that I'd go. Something. like that. Honestly, like as much Porsche. as these cars are amazing. I don't know if I, I mean, I don't know. We'll see when I actually have the money to do something like that. But even if I do, like, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I would, I would spend the money on it because well, like, I don't know. It's just like a different, I, I'm with you on that. Like, it's just like a different outlook on it. Well, because if you really enjoy the cars, a hundred percent, get the cars, do what you love. But like for me, like I love cars, but not 500 or a million dollars with a car that much. You know what I mean? Like, you know what? I, it, it's, it's funny you say that, right? So whereas you, you may say, Man, that's a lot of money. I would never spend that money on a car. That just seems silly, right? There's someone out there. You, you, you went to some expensive restaurant at some point, and, and other people are saying, oh, my God, I would never spend that kind of money on, on going to a restaurant. That's just crazy. That's just a waste of money. It depends on, A, where you are financially. 100%. Right? That's the right. first thing. Right? <laughs> and it also depends on, in many cases, what do you do for a living? Right. right, because oftentimes these types of cars can pay for themselves when they're used for marketing purposes, like this. That's right. <laughs> right, hmm. right. So if you've got a business where you know having an exotic car and having it seen a lot because you are in that type of business is getting you way more attention, right? More eyeballs, more people going to your website, more people inquiring about your business. You know, all it could take potentially is a client or two to cover the payment. That's now true. all of a sudden, it's not expensive. It's cheaper than your own car because no one's paying for your car payment, right? That's true. Right? So That's a good point. If, if your car's making you money, 
it's not an you know now it's it's not costing it's, yeah. you money it's making you money car hacks with jr yeah 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 yo gem drop right there Go buy yourself a Eurus, <laughs> depending on what you do. That's right. But buy a house first. Right. And so if it's heavy enough, you can get a write-off. <laughs> Consult with Lou Soriano before. Yes. Um, exactly. Yeah, we don't want to give you any misinformation. <laughs> I know All that's right. like a back and forth thing. Everyone always says that. Like some people say, like if it weighs, oh, I still have no idea. That's why I laugh at it. I, I just laugh. Every, everything's a write-off. Everything's, everything's a, write-off a write-off on social media. This oh, is not financial off, advice. Oh, All yeah. right, disclaimer, disclaimer. Right. Let's talk about the price points of the car. Sure. All right, because this one right behind us has over 100,000 in mods. Yeah. Uh, price point what four hundred and fifty thousand. The McLaren, six hundred thousand. Yeah, these guys they they get up there. This is wow. not entry level. No. All right, this is not entry level. They get up there, and you know they'll they'll cost a pretty penny to to buy, to maintain. You know you don't even think about what what happens to these tires. Okay. Oh my god. It's like a few. Especially on the LIE. It's oh like my god. Thousands of dollars just to get new tires. And you know, these cars aren't generally being driven three miles an hour. You know what I mean? Like those tires are getting some wear and tear. Yeah. And so every time those tires gotta get replaced, um, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Honestly, I cannot imagine what would go through my mind if I was driving on the LIE. Hit a pothole. And I oh hit a pothole gosh. and there's one of these cars and I'm just like, are you kidding me? There goes $5,000. You know you'd be thinking? It doesn't matter. I'm just going to call up JR. I'm coming. Oh, that's true. Right? That's true. You'd have that peace of mind. That's if you true. have an issue, just call JR. <laughs> that's that's right. it. That's it. That's right. So let's dive into real estate, right? Sure. Um, do you invest as well in, 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 the, in the game, real estate? Yeah, I'm highly interested in real estate when it comes down to I mean insurance is my game right that's where my income comes in but I it's not even possible for me to reinvest every single dollar that I make back into the business so then the question is well what do you do with the rest of any money that I save and I want my money to make money and I want to grow the wealth for sure so you know, for me, real estate is uh, the answer, or at least one of the answers. And so that's something that in the last uh, year or so that I've started to get involved in, uh, partnering up, investing in some uh, commercial real estate. And, you know, it, it, it's exciting. And I think that, listen, if you can find something that you can hold for years to come, the values are predictably going to go up. And, Appreciate definitely. You know, um, Passive income is a beautiful thing. It's also, you know, defined incorrectly all the time. People think passive income is that I've got a side hustle. But the type of investing that I'm currently doing is more on the money side. I'm still educating myself. So I don't consider myself uh, a, a real estate investor guru. I'm not going to be teaching any classes yet. No, I'm like yet. the ground level. Like, I, I, yeah, I, yeah I, I, am, I am not someone who should be scenes, teaching classes yet. The yeah. suitcase, the 911. Yeah. But, but it just brings the money. That's it. That's it. But, but you know what? It's not ju- obviously it's not just having money. It's also, you know, knowing who to partner with, who knows their shit. Okay. Who's, who's going to make you money? Who's got the connections? Who do you trust? Right. Who do you want to partner with? And then, you know, you've got brains and money and opportunity come together and make some magic. So I'm really excited about, um, one uh, project that I'm working on and looking for another one uh, out east right now that's in the works. Yeah. So speaking about appreciation, let's let's come back to the cars a little bit, but not these cars, just yeah. cars in general. So obviously, you know, COVID time happened, used car prices went up, new car prices went up yeah. like crazy. So are you familiar with what's going on right now? Because I haven't really been paying attention to it much, but like are, you know, car prices still up like crazy as they were before? They are. They definitely are. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is still crazy. Uh, inventory is better than it was a year ago, but it's still not where it once was. So just like the real estate market. Yeah. So it, it's, it's very similar. There just isn't enough supply. Gotcha. So people are overpaying, right? You know, um, my beautiful wife, Angela, has been wanting to get a new car and and uh, we're and I'm like all right well, let's get a new car but not right now yeah only because of the pricing that that's my opinion right that's my opinion is I don't think it's a smart time for me right now to do a huge upgrade that's me I know some people may not want me to say that but um, but I'm just trying to wait it out so that there's a little bit more supply and it's not just the pricing it's also it's really difficult to find what you want 
So, you know, I'm the type of person where I'll do all the research, I'm looking for the exact car and here the specs I want. Well, right. if you're the type of person who says, this is exactly what I want, this is a really tough market for you. Because, you know, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. We, we called up um, a dealership, uh, Angela spoke to a dealership, we've got a buddy at a local dealership and said, hey, do you have any of this, uh, this year make and model? And he's like, I have none. This was one of their most popular models. Wow. That used to fly off the shelves. They, they, you know, they just fly. And they don't have any. So it's, it's a tough time. So yeah, price, it, they have no incentive to give you any great deals. Right. Isn't that crazy, though, that cars are selling, I feel like, more now than before? Even yeah. with a, you know, appreciation the way it is? Yeah, they're flipping cars. The way that people flip homes, people are now flipping cars because... You get a used, if you get your hands on any type of deal, go on to Instagram, okay? You get your hands on a car, okay? Let's say you had some type of good deal. Go on Instagram and say, I've got this car for sale. Anyone interested? <laughs> and just watch it. Ding, 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 ding. Have you ever been That's to crazy. the auctions? I've been to the auctions before to, uh, to purchase vehicles. I have never personally gone. Of course, I know plenty of people that go on a regular basis, but, um, but I have not, I've never experienced it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely so now, should go. like, I feel like another thing that's coming up is, uh, Turo. I think that's what, what it's called, right? The car renting app. I haven't even heard of it. Oh yeah. I've heard of it. That. Where, so, go ahead. Yeah. It's just like a car renting app where you can basically rent cars, like peer to peer car lending from what I know. So basically like you could put up a car, you could buy a car, not like this, but like any car, right. You could put it up on, um, the app. And then somebody can rent the car directly from you for whatever, a few days. Mike, that, am I correct yeah. in saying that? So that's basically what it's like. It's so like the Airbnb basically, of cars. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so people are making a lot of money from what I hear off doing something like that. Yeah. Question, so now that you bring I, that up. Yeah, I, I guarantee, I really wonder what percentage of the people renting out their car to someone for the day is uh, letting their insurance company know. Just, just, that's what I was going to, I was curious about yeah, that. Yeah, so, so, so keep this in mind. I'll use that as a good segue. Um, you can lend your car to anybody, okay? But you are gonna be responsible for what they do to your car. Right, if, whether they're on the policy or, or, or not. That's right, so, so if my buddy says, hey JR, can I just, you know, my car's down, can I just use your car for the day, whatever? And I'm like, yeah, sure, go do your thing. They get into an accident, it's not like, well, he was the one driving, it's gonna be on my policy. All right. Gotcha. And I could absolutely be sued. You could be sued for anything. Right? right. But so you are taking responsibility. Right. You are going to be held liable for what that person does with your car. So that's really interesting. I'm going to definitely want to look at that. I think that they also sell. Mike, I don't know if I'm correct. On this. Do they, no. Do they sell insurance yeah, so with the cars? Yeah. So they become an insurance company. I don't know how much I trust that, but. Very interesting. So, well, it, let's see how that plays out. And, and the reason why I say that is um, most companies that go into the insurance business, um, they bleed money for years bleed money like it is nowhere close to being profitable because they haven't figured out how to measure their risk yet so they just start paying out the claim so anyone could be like oh i'm going to be the cheap insurance company and until you start getting clients and then then they start having claims and then you start writing out you know six figure checks for claims where you only were you know you took in a thousand bucks and then you write a check for a hundred thousand yeah it's a tough business it's a tough it's also a trust thing too it was like learning more about it. Just realize that you can't just have insurance from just anybody. Yeah. I don't lend out my car. I'll tell you that. Neither do I. <laughs> I, don't, I don't do it. Knowing what I know, but, I don't do it. Knowing how my friends ahead, drive, I don't. Question, because you brought it up before. Airbnb. How, now, how does that work as far as like home insurance? 
Um, that's a commercial property. So it's that, a commercial property. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's not like you could insure it as a standard homeowner's insurance policy. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's different types of homeowner policies. So, and they can go by different names. But you ultimately need, whether they call it a landlord policy or they call it a rental dwelling policy, whatever you want to call it, it's a policy where you own the house, but you don't live there. Okay? And you're renting it out. That's a different type of policy. And if you don't have that policy, two things could happen. One is when you have a claim they, and they find out that you don't live there, let's say you were insuring it as a standard homeowners, they've got the right to say, this contract is void. You lied about this property. You don't live here. This is a rental. So they've got the right to do that okay, uh, and to fight that. Um, just like as they would if they found out the house was vacant for, for a long period of time, right? There's clauses in there. The other aspect is you're not going to have coverages that a landlord would need. So let me give you a quick example. Let's just say that there was a fire, major water damage, whatever it is, the house is not livable. It could be that there was smoke, there was a fire and there was smoke damage, you can't breathe it. If that tenant can't live there, you can't charge them rent. Right. So what does that mean to you? That means you're losing income. Well, if you have the right policy, you can get loss of rental income as a coverage. That comes standard with those policies. Okay. So now instead of, hey, I got to fix my house because I got damage, you can also replace the income that you're getting. Whereas if it was a standard homeowner's policy, that coverage doesn't exist. And you're probably going to get in a little bit of trouble because the insurance company is going to say, wait a minute, I thought you lived here. Let so, me ask you a question. No. Um, I was told that renters should get their own policy as well. Yes, 100%. Yeah, yeah. So don't confuse a rental dwelling policy. That's the owner's policy. Okay. With renter's insurance, that's a tenant. So the owner, what's their concern? Hey, I want to make sure I can rebuild this thing, right? Maybe a little bit if they furnish it, a little bit of coverage for furnishing, and if they're ever sued, right? And of course, there's other little things, but that's, that's the bulk of it, right? right? The tenant... They have no concern about the building itself because they have no ownership in it. So what do they care about? Their stuff, so everything they're moving into the place, their clothing, their furniture, their decorations, right? Um, they have the concern of being sued because they themselves could be sued for something that happens, right? If they're being blamed for damage, blamed for injury, things like that, they can be sued as the tenant too. Right. Um, and they also need a place to stay if they can't live in the place. So one of the things that comes with those types of policies is, hey, we'll put you up in a hotel, right? Oh, you can't live in your, uh, your building for two months because they're renovating it or the house that you live in. Maybe you live in a basement unit and that got, you know, wrecked or whatever. Um, then you can have coverage that puts you up in a, in a hotel, in another apartment, all those different options. And in most cases, if you get that, where you have your car insurance, assuming you don't have other policies, the discount you'll get on the car insurance many times is equal to, if not more, than the cost of the renter's insurance, which means that having renter's insurance could be cheaper than not having it from a net cost. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, listen, if, if a renter's policy cost $100 a year and your discount on the car insurance was $200 a year, then what does that mean? That means by having the renter's insurance, you're actually going to net a savings of $100. Okay? Wow. So the renter's policy is not free. You are paying for it, but it's giving you a discount that's worth more than the cost of the renter's policy. So it's a net savings. Yo, we're so, getting tips and tricks all yeah. over the place today. Gems. Yeah, yeah we're, we're dropping like, well, not where you're It's a million dollar there, episode. I mean, what do you expect? <laughs> I got to do it. You know. Well, let me ask you this also. So for like past two, three years, right? Whatever was going on with COVID. Yeah. Um, you're talking about the renter, uh, the rental insurance, is it called? From What's the, what's the one for the homeowner? We call it landlord insurance. Landlord rental insurance. Yeah. Okay, so for the landlord insurance, if tenants were not paying during the COVID time, did that cover that? So if a tenant does not pay, like over for whatever reason that they have, yeah. that, that's not covered under that? Yeah, as th there's no, you know, um, you know, it's kind of like a gamble. Try, <laughs> trying to be uh, careful with my words. If a tenant does not pay uh, renter's insurance, landlord policies, they do not cover that. Okay. No, no, no. There has to be a loss to the property that's a covered loss. And then if the repercussions of that were to be that the tenant can't live there, then you're covered. But that's because there was a fire. There was water damage. You know, there was smoke damage. Those gotcha. are covered 
types of loss. A tenant just not paying? No. Can't so so let me ask you a question because this has happened in a couple of situations where we're selling a property. The seller fails to disclose us that there has been significant claims, mm. right? Let's say water damage, $100,000 worth of uh, claims. Yeah. Fails to disclose that. So obviously when the next buyer comes to get an insurance that pops up yeah. and it's a lot pricier than it would normally be, uh, does that happen to you a lot like in, in the business? It's not something that we see. Um, I've had people ask, hey, can you run a quote on, 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 a, on, a, on a house? Sometimes if there was a claim at that address, it'll come up in the underwriting report. Um, so sometimes we can see it, but not all the time. Um, because generally we're running a report, let's say it's, you know, for James, it's just going to show, hey, does James have any claims? But sometimes it could show if something's happened on that property and it's kind of like uh, running a Carfax. I guess yeah. you can do yeah. that. But it, that, it's rare that we're seeing it. It's, no one's really ever, for the most part, asking, hey, can you run the quote to see if there was something that happened prior? But that's why, uh, shout out, you know, to, let's say, home inspectors. I don't know if we know anybody between the three of us, Mike Dottino, <laughs> right? Of course. Right? Um, but that's why it's so important, obviously, to have an inspector, uh, a legitimate inspector, look for things like water damage. Is there evidence that there's been water in the basement? Yeah, right? all right. Going to those corners and, and looking for things like that. Certain scenarios, though, they fix it so good that you can't tell. Yeah. Yeah. If there was any damage. Yeah. When I bought my house, okay, when I moved in, I had an infant, all right? My daughter, who's now eight, was maybe like a month old, okay? We moved, we, you know, we did the look around. We had the inspection. Everything looked fine. After living there for a month, all of a sudden in my bedroom, which they had um, newly painted, it was nice, freshly painted, right? All of a sudden, that paint started to turn a little black, Oh. And the mold start coming through. Wow. Those jerks that, li that live there behind me, they just painted, painted over, over the, the mold. mold. So wow. it didn't show up in the inspection because you couldn't visually see anything. Right. They just painted right over it. So, yeah, it's move furniture. You know, I don't need to tell inspectors what to do, but hire inspectors. Hire, le hire legitimate inspectors and look in those corners. Look for any evidence because when people are desperate to sell their house... You know, they're, they, don't want, they don't want to spend the money to, to fix the mold, so they just got some yellow paint went like this. And I had an infant. Can you imagine my, oh my reaction? Gosh. Yeah, that's, uh, that's insane. Lost, lost for words. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, can only imagine the rage because I have kids as well. Yeah, man. So that's, 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 I don't even know what to say. That's nuts. Yeah, I mean, we have to cut up the whole wall, just get rid of all of that and air it out and all that stuff. Man. So the, that's like the bad sides of... Uh, buy real estate things like that could happen which sucks but yep um on another note in terms of insurance so you've been building out your business a bunch you've been on social media a bunch what are your goals for the future like with social media and in terms of the insurance business where are you looking to take it so uh social media is you know for me it's a great tool it has helped blow up um our agency tremendously and you've been getting a lot years. of traction yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, you know, it has its ups and downs. You know, anyone who does social media knows that, you know, you could do a video and you're like, man, I really like this one. This is great. And, and I'm teaching something and I think it's fun. And then I'll just like, bomb. Six right? views. <laughs> right? And then you'll do like some sort of like random, oh, let me just do this. I'll just say something and I'll just put it down. And all of a sudden it's like ding, 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 ding. Literally, that just happened to me. Right? So it's so unpredictable. The only thing you can do is just be consistent. And so my goal is to try to educate and entertain the best I can with the subject of insurance. Show people, frankly, that I know my shit and that I'm a, you know, hopefully it comes through that I'm a good guy. Yeah. Um, and just constantly put it out there so people know what we do, how we can help them and, and tips and, you know, just to make people a better consumer, right? So that they've got, you know, the more education people have, the easier it is for us. Um, and what we find is it doesn't matter how smart people are. I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but it doesn't matter how smart people are. I've got people who are literally surgeons 
who've got who knew nothing about insurance. Oh my gosh, I want to touch base on that after. Okay, so you know what it's like, right? You've got really smart clients who, in their world, they're the cream of the crop, they're the shit, they're the one everyone's bowing down to, but in your world, this is how much they know. Sometimes they come to you with ego, sometimes, hopefully, they come to you and say, teach me your ways, a wise one, right? You know what I mean? But um, I just try to educate and I try to do it as entertaining as I can, and it has helped the business tremendously. I get, I get calls, and I get people contact me on a regular basis saying, "Can you help me? Can you help my client?" It's awesome. And it's the best. One, one thing I like to think about social media, I think of it as like your own TV network, right? And yeah. you have the control of what content you want the consumer to consume, yeah. whether it's education, it's value, it's humor. Right. You have that control. You just have to create the content and be persistent and put it out there. Yeah, I just, my thing is I'm just trying to be me and just put myself out there as much as possible. And you know, the funny thing is about social media is, you know how what you hear over and over again is be authentic, be authentic. And what I have found over a period of time is you can have all the intentions of being authentic, but if you're consuming a lot of social media yourself, it it infiltrates all of a sudden like your output. And sometimes it actually influences you. It does, right? And sometimes it takes a longer period of time before you actually know yourself and what your voice is and what you want to put out there and how you want to put it out there. So for me, it's been an evolution of like, oh, this is how I want to look. This is what the types of things I want to say. Here's how I want to say it. And it's, it's been like this and it's never going to stop, you yeah. know, but it's fun. No, well, one thing we did want to thank you is for being a sponsor for November 13th. We're yeah, having yeah. a huge charity basketball game for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital at Nassau Coliseum. Tinks, links uh, down below right here, right here, right here. So make sure you order your tickets. So definitely, we, we definitely appreciate your support Absolutely. for being a platinum sponsor at our event. Yeah, man. Great cause. I can't wait for the event. Uh, the first one was good. I think you guys have leveled up. Uh, oh yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it for sure. We had an update last week, Kevin. You want to do the update this week on the number that we're at? So currently, we've raised over thirty thousand wow. dollars. Our goal is to raise fifty thousand. Wow! So we've doubled our goal originally, which was last year. Uh, our goal was what ten thousand. Our goal was ten thousand. And this year we we're at raised. 50. Yeah. We're, we're shooting for the stars here because it's for a good cause. It is for a good cause. You only 5 x it? You couldn't 10 x it? Oh, we I mean, should. Come on, guys. <laughs> who knows? Maybe, who knows what we'll get to? Maybe, the year, maybe next year we'll be at 10 x We'll okay. see. Okay, all right. Last question that we yeah. have for you. Uh, between these two cars, which one would you choose and why? Man, um, I'd probably... Listen, I'm a family man. I got I to gotta go for the hottest soccer mom mobile right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. I like the ears. Me too. I, That's my pick. You know, Definitely. I, I, I just don't see, I don't, I don't think I could live with myself having like, you know, stale crumbled up Cheerios and McLaren. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the ears. <laughs> I want, one thing I did want to touch base on is yeah. while we're all here, I have one suggestion for everybody who's watching this to do. Okay. Before you buy a car like this, make sure that you have your house. If you're looking to buy a house and buy a car, make sure you buy the house first and the expensive car second. Do we all agree on that? Yes. Of course. I'm going to alley hoop and make sure you contact JR JR for for the home insurance and the car insurance. Yeah. And life insurance. Yes. Because your wife wife might kill you for buying this car. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, I, I, I will not name names, but occasionally I catch my clients doing things they probably shouldn't be doing with their cars. Um, so life insurance is a good idea. <laughs> I honestly, like, from what I see, from, like, the mortgage standpoint of it, so if somebody buys a huge car, I mean, somebody buys a car with a huge monthly payment onto it, yeah. it hurts their debt-to-income ratio. So it affects them as to what they can purchase home-wise. And a, so and a purchase like this would affect your debt-to-ratio 1,000%. Right. So make sure, get an affordable car if you need one, buy the house. Then if you want to level up and get another car, then buy the car after you get the house to make sure that everything's good and you can be, you know, smooth set on your purchase. Good advice. And uh, one last thing we want to let you know, this is uh, our new merch coming out. Real Ooh. Estate Hustle, custom hoodies, Real Estate and Chill, merch coming soon. Very nice. Coming soon. Hot. Thanks, JR, guys. where can people contact you? you? Need home insurance, life insurance, car uh, insurance. Or just want to learn. 
Yeah, um, certainly go to my page. I'm sure there's going to be a, a link over here. So you can go to my page. Um, you know, my cell phone is on there. So I'm all for people just contacting me directly. Um, I love being a point of contact and then eventually, you know, connecting um, anyone to, to people on my team as well. Just so that, you know, there's a, a whole group. Um, you can call my office, 516-466-3276. But listen, if you, whether you Google my name or you look for me on Instagram, you'll find me. All right. Awesome. There you have it. Million dollar episode. I mean, what else could we say? Thank you, JR, for everything today. We appreciate it. You have the crown. Thank you. Really cool shoot. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thanks, guys. Hands down. Thank, Thank you, you again, so man. much. Appreciate you. Thank you. That was the latest episode of Real Estate and Chill Podcast. We will see you next time.